Hi, welcome to A Place of Faith. We are so glad to have you with us today. A Place of Faith invites and encourages all who are seeking a community to empower, support, and explore deeper understanding of spirituality and recovery of all kinds. We join together with our family and loved ones in our journey to enlightenment and recovery, supporting one another spiritually without judgment or prejudice. Today, I invite you to join us as we explore the spiritual principle of tradition. Okay, so that's not really a spiritual principle. Kind of hard to say that with a straight face. Spiritual principle of tradition. But I hope that you'll stay with us. And as we go through this service, I hope you'll get a good feeling, a good understanding about how our traditions shape and empower us as people in recovery and so especially in our spirituality. Please join me in prayer. Higher power, great spirit, as we move together into this next few minutes, let us come joyously. Let us celebrate the learning, understanding, and spiritual growth and development that we share. Let us share these learnings with our family, with our support group, with the people that are dearest to our hearts. Thank you, God. Amen. And now, Jody is going to bless us with some of his special music. Maybe we can never house the homeless Rid the streets of violence and crime Make the world a safe place for our children But we can try Maybe we can never feed the hungry Chase every war plane from the sky do away with ignorance and hatred But we can try well, Sometimes I feel so helpless Cause all I can do is my best But even the longest journey Begins with a single step Maybe we won't always find forgiveness Give our wildest dreams the wings to fly Maybe we won't always love our neighbors But we can try well, Sometimes I feel so helpless But I'm gonna do my best Cause even the longest journey begins with a single step. Maybe we won't always find forgiveness. Give our wildest dreams wings to fly. Maybe we won't always love our neighbors, but we can try. Oh, we can try Oh, we can try, we can try Oh, we can try, we can try Oh, we can try, we can try Oh, we can try
during this part of our celebration together, I'd like to give you some ideas to contemplate on the word tradition. And research on this was very fascinating to see where traditions can take us and the ideas behind tradition. Most say it was a sense of comfort, of belonging, that represents a critical place in our culture. It has helped to form the structure and foundations of so many families and of society. However, there's all kinds of sides to traditions. And Somerset Maughan says, traditions are a guide, not a jailer. And Karen Armstrong, who has 12 steps to a compassionate life says, when can either emphasize those aspects of our traditions, religion, or, or secular that speak of hatred, exclusion, and suspicion, or work with those that stress the interdependence of equality of all human beings? The choice is yours. So you're going to come across traditions from perhaps your family or your school as you grew up that were wonderful, or those that need changing. There is no creation available without tradition. The new is an inflection of a preceding form. Novelty is always a variation of the past. So we're always building, building on what went before us. But as I mentioned earlier, tradition is not merely looking at something and thinking it was worthy. As you contemplate on some of the ideas that were given to you on tradition, Another part of our celebration time together is putting that word or that concept into action. And looking back in my own life and how I grew up, I grew up in a very well-grounded family that believed in integrity and in a strong work ethic. This was right around the end of World War II, and there was a lot of things that were very scarce. Housing was scarce. I can remember my mother saying, you had to stand in line to buy nylons to wear. So things were different. So a strong work ethic, integrity were very important. But as I grew up and went a different way, a way of addiction, that went out the window. That integrity, that work ethic, no longer was important in my life. What was important was my drug of choice. And when I finally got into recovery, when I finally hit bottom, and thankfully for those people that were there for me, and I was in my drug of choice for some 25 to 30 years, those gifts that I received as traditions in my family, integrity, a strong worth ethic, were returned to me. And they help me and guide me every day of my life. And I am so grateful for that that was imparted to me from my parents. And I leave you with the concepts and the spiritual principle 
in action of the word tradition. Thank you. God of the mis... Uh, let me try that again, sorry. God of the mystical canyons, God of the ocean's blue, God of the glacier carved mountains, I give myself to you. God of the first redwood forest. God of the seedling new, God of the wild flower meadow, I give myself to you. Yours is a higher power, yours is a great. Finally, I surrender into your loving hands. God of the sun's endless fire, God of the gleaming moon, God of the earthly oasis. I give myself to you. Yours is a higher power. Yours is a greater plan. Finally, I surrender into your love. God of the heartbeat within me, God of this gift of life, God of no end or beginning, I am yours and you are mine, I am yours and you That was beautiful, Jody. That beautiful message, the music, the melody takes us now into our quiet time. This is the time for us. All the cares, thoughts, chores that are ours to do, ours to embrace, ours to take care of, are put aside. The one thing we focus on now is ourself. Get comfortable in your chair or your seat. Focus on you, the love, the joy, the warmth, the light that is you. Breathe in. Feel the energy. Feel 
the warmth. Feel the love. Breathe out this energy, this warmth, this love. Focus on your unique rhythm of breath. This sets the tone of who you are. Tradition. Start your own tradition. Your quiet time for you. Relax. Embrace the love. Feel the connection that you have with your higher power. Embrace the higher power. Thank your higher power. for bringing you where you are today. What's in the past was a journey that brought you to where you are now. We are formed today by what we experienced yesterday. Be thankful for what you've experienced because that has made you the loving, wonderful person that you are today. You are unique. You are loved. You are joyful. And you are a gift to the world. I am thankful of your gift. I recognize your gift. I appreciate you and your gift. Center yourself. Focus on you. Focus on you as a loving gift. Your tranquility emanates to the world around you. You are love. You are loved. Breathe in this love. Surround yourself with this love. This feeling you can bring forward anytime. You are concerned, questioning, conflicted, fearful, 
think back to the beautiful tones of the music, to the way you feel right now. This will help center you. It will bring you back to knowing you are deserving of all the goodness that you are receiving and is coming your way. Breathe in an invigorating deep breath. Feel the energy. Feel the static electricity inside of you wanting to get out, to touch the world, to share the world with all. Open your eyes. Smile. Look around. Be thankful for what you have around you. Be thankful that you are here in the present. It's a beautiful life. And we are living it. Wiggle your fingers and toes. Stretch your arms out. Breathe in. Prepare to face the day and conquer. You are wonderful. You are loved. You are a deserving, wonderful being. And you are blessed. Be joyful. Be happy. Thank you so much, Judy, Patricia, Jody. What a great team we have. Please join me in prayer. Higher power, beloved spirit, God, we thank you for this time that we share together, that we learn together, and we explore together. God, we thank you as we develop on every level the way that we are supposed to be. Higher power, guide us, lead us, and show us all that is ours to see. And so it is. So when I told the team that this week we needed to work on traditions, I got a little blowback on that one. It seems like everybody's got a lot of different feelings about traditions, good, bad, ugly, whatever. And it's amazing how many people feel like it's the traditions that they've been subject to in their lives that have held them back and, and twisted them around and, and, and left them floundering in the world and lost. Traditions of being the the scapegoat or the guinea pig or the one that gets blamed, traditions of being held accountable for things that weren't even our fault, traditions of having to run and hide because we're going to be victims, traditions of anger and and defect and punishment. 
But those don't have to be our traditions. If we try and hold on to traditions that were imposed upon us, it does hold us back. It does keep us from moving forward. <clears throat> many of you, <clears throat> excuse me, many of you know that my mother died a few weeks ago. I'm not talking a lot about it because I'm still grieving and, and going through a lot of feelings, which is great. It's, it's supposed to happen, but I'm not ready to share a lot of her with you. One thing I'm finding is without her in my life, it's changed one of my traditions. I have been in the tradition for maybe 10 years of talking to my mother every single day. Who does that, right? The reason it started was my grandmother, her mother, had passed away, and my mom had been calling her mom every single day. Her mom had gone blind. And mom would call and find out what she was doing, what she needed, what was going on with her, and just got in the habit of talking to her mother every day. And at the time, my mom and I were not what you would call friends or even friendly. So I think the, the idea came from somewhere outside or maybe deep within me when she told me she was having trouble um, in the mornings especially because that was the time she talked to her mom. And I chirped up with, I'm up in the mornings, I'm early, I'll talk to you every day, Mom. And that tradition became the, the pathway that created the friendship and the understanding and the respect that I was able to find in my relationship with my mother before she passed. And, you know, it hurt some more. Um, I think there was a time when if she had passed, I really wouldn't have noticed because that was a relationship that we had. And there's a lot more feelings now, but the feelings are feelings of completion and rightness. Um, I feel like it was right that my mother and I had the relationship that we did before she passed. And for me, there's the spiritual, the spiritual principle of tradition. So often, we have ended up with traditions that don't serve us, that don't represent us, that don't even have meaning to us. And whenever I'm working with somebody who's trying to make major changes in their life and, and faltering and, and sliding back into old ways that they're trying so hard to get out of, we look at those traditions. What are you doing? Sometimes they're little tiny things. Um, a tradition might be getting up in the morning and making your bed, and then you know you don't crawl back into it, right? You're up for the day. But something that happens from that tradition is when you go back into your room, that bed is made. Anyone would be proud to be in this bedroom, to sleep in this bed. And you know what? It's mine. It's for me. What a wonderful, healing, beautiful tradition that is. Really? Just making the bed? But it can be that small. Sometimes it's a whole lot bigger. Sometimes we grew up celebrating things that we don't feel like we need to celebrate at all. We might be um, feeling like we're... we're forced to host a big party for the family because it's this day, whatever this day is. And this day has no meaning to us. The, the whole meaning is about putting up with a bunch of relatives who are going to say a bunch of things we don't want to hear, and, and it may be a real problem. And when we stop and evaluate, this day isn't something that honors who I am or who I'm becoming. This day has no meaning for me. 
and therefore neither does this tradition. When I was teaching a class on traditions, um, which I did for, for years, and that's a whole different story, one of the traditions that came up for me, a lot of them were around holidays, and that's why I was talking about it, but one of the traditions that was presented to me was um, having for Christmas the nativity set up without the baby Jesus. So there's the Holy Family and an empty cradle on the manger awaiting the baby. And then out in the distance would be three wise men. And every day they'd magically get closer and closer. And I thought, what, what a lovely tradition. If those are your values, what fun is that? For St. Patrick's Day, when my kids were little, I started that tradition of grabbing one of their little tiny trolls and dipping their feet in green dye. And I would make little feet marks all over the place, like something little and green had been walking around. They had so much fun with that. I think they were in third or fourth grade before they realized that, that was me. They were just sure there was something small and green running around the house. As an adult, that's kind of an uncomfortable idea. But as a kid, it was magical, and it was so much fun. When my kids grew up and, and got out on their own, I so desperately wanted them to create their own traditions. But when I would go and have Christmas with them or Easter, they were doing exactly the same things that I did when they were, when they were kids. And I kept telling them, you have to make it your own. You have to make it your own. Over time, a lot of that happened. My daughter has told me, and, and love this, so I'll share it, that being with me is her Christmas tradition. Wherever we are, we spend that together. How cool is that? I've got some really, really awesome kids. Another tradition that I was able to share was uh, sitting at the table and having a young man at the head of the table, he was about 30. It seems like most of the world is, is younger than I am right now. And he, before any food was served, he sang the Torah. And we just sat there and cried. It was so beautiful, so incredible, and a little surprising. You know, we all sat down to the table, and the guy at the head of the table started singing. But that's the way it was in his family. And what a beautiful, wonderful tradition. What about spiritual traditions? And that's kind of where we're, where we're going with that, right? So often we have spiritual traditions that send us running, screaming in the opposite direction. We don't want anything to do with that. Thank you very much. That's not, not for me at all. Uh, many of us have been in churches where you sit down, stand up, kneel, sit down, stand up, kneel. Somebody says something, you say something back, and it's not even your language. You don't even know what that was. But you walk away feeling like somebody's mad at you and that you've done something wrong and you get to go back and do it again next week, why wouldn't, why would I do that? Why, why, ooh, because nobody explained it to me, because those traditions meant nothing to me, because I was doing what I was told to do. And I believe when I started talking about tradition as a spiritual principle, that's the, the sandpaper I was rubbing up against. And that's not what I'm talking about. When I first started on my own spiritual path, my truth path, my truth, I found that I have a tradition of going up into the mountains and being there when the sun comes up and singing. Who does that, right? Well, apparently I do. It's got 
incredible meaning for me. And when I'm having a hard time with anything at all, I do that. I'm up before the crack of dawn. I have several favorite little ranges around uh, San Diego County, and some of them are always open because they aren't actual paths, just so you know. And I can hike up to the top of a mountain and watch the day be born and just sing in joy and love. And that's my first spiritual tradition. I have a whole lot more that have developed over the years. And the thing is, they don't need to be yours. And you don't even need to know what they are. I do. They're for me. I have spiritual traditions that help me align, that help me become who I'm supposed to be, what I'm supposed to be. I have tr traditions that take away all my anger, that put me in, in fun, in joy, in laughter, that make me know I have value, that I'm important, that there's a reason for me to be here. My traditions. Sometimes those traditions are around candlelight, having a fire in the fireplace, sitting down with family at the table, um, maybe a certain prayer, maybe meeting together for worship, maybe going out on a surfboard all by yourself at that perfect time of day and being out in the world. If it's your tradition, if it brings you closer to whatever it is you know you need to be close to, then it is a spiritual tradition. And that's what I'm talking about when I say tradition as a spiritual principle. It may not technically be a principle, but if we have the traditions right, we can create any change that we want to, and we can make that change solid, and we can make that change real. Instead of talking to my mom in the morning, <clears throat> I've been going out into one of my favorite early morning spots and getting on Facebook and doing a morning meditation. If you're on our website, you can look those up. I'm not the only one doing them. Sometimes when instead of talking to my mom, I share a meditation. And it's a brand new tradition. And it's a wonderful tradition that I'm happy to share with you. Please join me in prayer. Thank you, God. As we grow together understanding traditions, we know we can take this knowledge and create and solidify any changes that we want to make in our lives. God, we know we can use these traditions to bring us closer to you, to bring us closer to our true self, and to put the things that we need to leave behind us farther behind. Thank you, God. Amen. Thank you, Linda, for your beautiful message on traditions. That was an eye-opener for me, and I'm sure it touched many of you in special ways. A couple of announcements we'd like to leave you with. Service is part of the 12-step programs to encourage you to look beyond yourselves and to serve others. And in this particular time, there's two organizations in the East County that desperately need your help. The Salvation Army needs food donations, and the San Diego Blood Bank needs blood. You can look up their numbers and be of service. We want to work with your organization. We can bring this celebration service to your organization, and you can contact us through a place of faith at zohomail.com. You can also connect with us on Facebook as well as our email address, a place of faith at zohomail.com. We want to thank you for your support. 
Your tithes and offerings keep this ministry going. You can send checks to Unity Church of El Cajon at 311 Highland Avenue, El Cajon 92020, or you can go on to Unity's webpage and there is a donate button that is easy and safe. Or you can visit, or excuse me, or you can call the church office and donate by credit card. At any of these, please mention that this donation is for a place of faith. In closing, we'd like to welcome back Jody to play a song, and then Patricia will have our closing prayer. Again, thank you for joining us. is my decision It's up to me to give of my heart Love is my decision And no one else can tell me to start and Once I decide change my mind God will show me how love is my decision my decision right here and now love is my decision it's up to me to stand on that bridge. Love is my decision. No one else can make me forgive. And once I decide to change my mind, God, Show me how and love is my decision, my decision right here and now. It's my decision right here and now, my decision right here. Thank you, Jody. Thank you for joining us today. Would you join me in prayer? Prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Have a wonderful week. Here at A Place of Faith, we want you to know that you're not alone. We know how challenging these times are. We want you to know we're all in this together, doing the best that we can 
where we are with what we have. Reaching out and asking for assistance isn't always easy. It takes courage and strength. We understand this struggle as well. Below you will find a list of local resources that are here to assist those in need. If you have an emergency, please dial 911. Your health in mind, body, and spirit are very important to us. Blessings.